it is. Hey there, I am Mycroft. I want to use Plasma on my big screen TV. How about? At little voice apps here. At little traditional applications there. A bunch of KCMs everywhere. And we have your Plasma big screen experience ready for use. Now let's see one of my voice apps in action. Hey Mycroft. Show me what's trending on YouTube. Glad that works. Now how about browsing the web? Let's try that with a remote instead. Let's check out Wikipedia. Some scroll down. Some scroll up. And back to home. That was amazing. Let's now learn more about Plasma Big Screen from my team. Okay, uh, now how I do get back to the presentation or I do have to... <laughs> okay, I have to upload the presentation again, I think so. So, 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 I do upload the presentation. Okay, here we are on the presentation again. Um, uh, so uh, you you just seen um, uh, some feature of uh, uh, Plasma Big Screen. So as you seen is uh, a big media center, uh, which is uh, a um, uh, which is uh, meant to run on a TV. Uh, our reference hardware is a uh, Raspberry Pi 4, um, and uh, uh, we use it as uh, uh, connected with HDMI and uh, um, uh, HDMI and uh, 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 to the to the to the TV um, with a remote control connected to the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, when uh, uh, you um, uh, when you are on a TV, uh, it's uh, very different than writing an application for the desktop uh, because uh, uh, there you have uh, only. Um, uh, only uh, very few inputs, so the input is, is very different, you don't have mouse and keyboard, you don't have touch, you just have a, a remote control with a few uh, direction keys, uh, media keys, and not much else. Uh, recently you have voice as well, and uh, um, and we used also, also voice support with the Microsoft uh, voice assistant and some integration with it uh, and also the uh, the output is is very different it's a very big screen but it's very far uh, so the information uh, must must be really not dense um, uh, plasma big screen is written mostly uh, in Qt and QML so uh, QML with regards to uh, keyboard navigation, it's very tricky, uh, but also uh, very powerful if you um, if you follow some rules. Uh, there are some old uh, keyboard navigation things that will be uh, were inserted and uh, at the 
uh, at the beginnings of the QML life cycle, which is better to not use much anymore, like the keys that forward to uh, attached event, uh, but there are also uh, new things, uh, newer things that are uh, very useful, like in navigation, which I will talk a bit more in detail later. Uh, this is uh, uh, our reference um, uh, remote control. Uh, it's a pretty standard thing. Uh, they are pretty cheap. Uh, they are seen uh, as uh, a USB keyboard. It has a little USB dongle. Uh, so the arrow keys are seen as actual arrow keys um, and so on. Um, that makes uh, uh, that makes uh, really easy uh, to um, implement things um, uh, that work with it. It also has an internal microphone. Uh, it's also seen as a USB sound card uh, for the microphone, which is very important. Uh, it's very important for uh, um, uh, uh, for the Mycroft uh, integration. Some of them also have a kind of Wiimote gyroscope uh, kind of thing for controlling the mouse, uh, but uh, we chosen to not to depend from that um, in Plasma Big Screen, as it's at most a uh, a nice fallback when there is some UI that it's not really up to par, but we want to have a good good UI. Uh, so the workflow interaction of Plasma Big Screen is very simple. You turn on the TV, uh, you see a big uh, full screen of um, of menu items, and. Um, um, and then you choose what item to, to launch. And then you go back. Uh, now, uh, I don't have much time left, so I will uh, just go uh, quickly over things. Uh, so we have uh, some settings done with system settings and KCM, which has been uh, op optimized uh, a lot for uh, keyboard interaction. Uh, the primary user interface is done by a plasma, a plasma shell using Plasma Nano, which is, uh, is mostly a, a kind of framework to build shells on it, but it's not a shell in itself. All you see, it's a containment. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is the QML and key navigation. As I, as I said, uh, use the key navigation attached property. Uh, with it, you can uh, uh, you can uh, um, specify where the focus goes um, uh, when you press up, down, left, right on each control. Uh, so uh, it's it's a very verbose uh, API, but if well used, uh, you can make key navigation go pretty well. Uh, also, focus scope. Um, it's a, it's a very good thing uh, as uh, uh, memorizes with the difference between uh, uh, focus and active focus, where the focus was in the last focus scope. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, talk more about it, uh, but I will happy to answer any question about it. Now I will leave the microphone uh, to Aditya. Please take it away. Hello. Oh, hope everyone can hear me. Yeah. Hi okay. everyone. Uh, I'm Aditya, and today I'm going to be talking about voice applications and what's so special about voice applications. So, for one, voice applications aren't your traditional desktop applications. They are basically Python skills written in Mycroft. They don't draw their own window. 
Python voice applications have a QML user interface and basically can provide a different user interface for different type of devices without having to rewrite a skill. Voice applications can also be served over the network. Micro voice skills on being bundled with a QML user interface and a traditional desktop entry file is actually what turns these vanilla Microsoft skills into voice applications. These voice applications are then installable from online stores and gain the ability to become launchable via the big screen launcher. To support these operations, Microsoft GUI application provides a skill launching framework. So let's talk more about what is the micro GUI and what are micro GUI skills. Micro skills are generally developed in Python and provide all the logical functioning of the voice application. These skills can then take advantage of the micro skill class to perform operations such as speaking dialogues and sending data over to an enclosure. Micro enclosures can be of any type of service. They can be a video service. They can be an audio service or they can be an actually a physical device that can output data from a Microsoft skill. Microsoft GUI is both a framework and an application powered by Kiragami and Qt. The Microsoft GUI pro framework provides a skill view in which these awesome voice applications display their pages. It additionally also provi provides an API to talk to Microsoft Enclosure API that serves as a data pipe for skill events, GUI event triggers that are accessible over Microsoft's WebSocket message bus. So Microsoft's GUI's awesome architecture, awesome architecture for displaying skill pages and data can take advantage of Qt's file selectors to be able to deploy the same voice application across multiple platforms with a dedicated user interface for each platform. For example, Class on a Big Screen, which is mainly designed to work with key navigation and USB remotes, can use the Media Center file selector to display pages and serve QML files that support key navigation and tile-based user interfaces. One could also use the Android file selector for a touch-based interface for something like an Android mobile platform. Let's look at some of the history of packaging voice applications. So one of the early implementation challenges we faced while working on the voice application concept was packaging. Micro skills are tra traditionally lived inside an author's Git repository, which have been generally only installable via the skill command line interface using repository links provided by authors. We wanted to make this process much simpler by providing a graphical user interface utility. And that's how the skill install was born. One of the concepts was to have a central location for listing all the voice skills and applications without actually searching for GitHub and forum links for reposting their voice apps or voice skills. It was then we figured that we could actually utilize the awesome Plink store and the OCS API to achieve this. The Microsoft Skill Installer is a graphical front end to Microsoft's own Skill Manager command line utility. It provides support for OCS enabled API stores that can link their data to the Skill Installer. Authors can add voice applications by listing them under the Microsoft Apps category on the Plink Store. Voice applications listed on the Plink Store by the authors then provide the graphical user interface, skill meta information like which branch the installer should use, or if the voice applications need any specific system dependencies installed to work correctly. This creates a much cleaner installation and distribution experience for both the users and voice application and voice skill developers. Moving on, let's talk about skills with the home page. Home pages provide that traditional application experience when using non voice input methods to voice applications. Home pages are like an entry point to the voice application. 
they provide a central interface for controlling the voice application, either via key, key navigation or via voice navigation. Home pages are also required to tell the skill desktop entry file which skill pages should be displayed when opening a voice application from the launcher. So voice applications are really easy to get started with. With all one needs is a basic idea of what they would like the application to do. This can be as complex as interacting with video service library APIs online, displaying hundreds of playable movies that can be made interactive through a conversational style voice interface, or can be a simple displaying images gallery or speaking quotes from some website. One can refer to the detailed documentation with examples for Plasma Big Screen website and Microsoft's own documentation site to read about developing your first GUI enable voice application using the Micro GUI framework. Micro GUI framework also provides a bunch of templates to help you get started with making simple skills. And the freedom of QML is not only limited to these templates. The power to explore what voice applications can be made to do is only limited to one's own creativity. And Plasma Big Screen users would surely be glad to have more of them. Feel free to drop into Plasma Big Screen Telegram channel for more updates, discussions, or any help regarding voice applications. Thank you. Uh, we're good for questions. Uh, doesn't seem uh, to be uh, questions, not yet. Um, so uh, we can uh, uh, fill up a bit the uh, time by go going a bit more in details. Yeah, sure, we can. We still have seven minutes. Yeah, but 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 please uh, uh, feel feel free to do any question uh, about. Um, yes, everyone, if they have, okay. if you have questions, please share it in the shared notes so I can let them know. Okay, uh, people attendees are asking for some demo. Is that possible at the moment? Uh, I don't think at the moment, Aditya, do you have uh, something uh, set up? Not really, not right now. Okay. okay. So, so uh, yeah. Is there any oh, boss session today? So the the nearest uh, the nearest uh, to a demo right now, I think, is the is the video uh, that we posted in at the beginning, which I am. Uh, posting a URL now in the chat. Um, so uh, that, um, uh, that video has actual um, uh, actual uh, uh, screens and actual interaction of uh, uh, Plasma Big Screen. Uh, the kind of a bit robotized voice that there is uh, in, the, uh, in the foreground is the actual voice uh, of Mycroft. Uh, that has just been uh, modified to actually um, to to speak a description of the video, uh, but it, it is the voice that you will hear uh, when you interact uh, with it. Uh, in the Microsoft setup, there are a couple of three or four different voices that you can choose from. Um, uh, so yeah, in the in. In, in the end, we chose to do a very, a very simple and basic thing for now, uh, partly also because uh, we think that experience of watching a TV is not much using the Chrome that there is around, but it's actually watching the stuff. So um, I'm so sorry, Marco, to interrupt you, but we have a few questions. OK, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Uh, the first question is, what's the base system and how do I install it on a Pi 4? Okay, uh, so we have uh, now an image on uh, uh, based on Neon. Um, and uh, uh, I will post uh, later in the chat a link to the, uh, to the image. Uh, so uh, installing it on the Pi 4, it's quite easy. Um, you download the image, you flash it on a microSD, and as it's usual with Raspberry Pi, 
uh, you just you just uh, put the micro SD in the Raspberry Pi and boot it and it's okay a uh, very later version of the Raspberry Pi can also boot from USB you would have to make some manual modification on the image for doing that but it's kind of supported as well okay our next question we just have three minutes uh, so it will be quick any idea how far the integration on post market market OS is for big screen Okay, so I can take that. Uh, so uh, from what I know, there are a few packages on post market OS who are trying to package big screen and Microsoft for post market OS. Okay, great. Uh, the other question is: Is there a Python wrapper for the OCS Plain Store API? Uh, so yes, uh, I think there is a Python wrapper, but uh, we don't use the Python wrapper. We use the cute stuff directly. Okay, great. Uh, so the last question: uh, Which applications are supported for big screen? Boot only, GTK. Do they need to be optimized for remote control? Okay, so uh, basically. The, the the thing is, on the last question, do they need to be optimized for remote control, is yes. Uh, so any application that works decently with the remote control, and it's at the moment packaged on Neon or uh, packaged on PostMarket post OS, um, that is supported. But if on one end you could, you could really launch the GIMP, uh, the GIMP on, on, uh, on on there, but you wouldn't do much with it in the end. Uh, so, uh, if an application is GTK or if it has a, a, a private um, a private toolkit, it's it's okay as long as they they work nicely with the remote control. Uh, you can you can, for instance, you can just install Kodi alongside and launch Kodi as an application. That's perfectly uh, supported. Uh, but but yeah, just just anything goes as long as uh, works well with the remote control.